Mac Miller. Don't know. Um, this isn't recognizable to anyone right now. It's just a black box with some tubes. Some uh, 12 AU7 tubes. Because I've sort of like removed the mysticism to see if it still sounds as good to my brain. And of course it does because it's a Wu Audio Wa7. To Wa7 Firefly is not Topaz. A Topaz lives here. That's the Wa11. That's This is the Wu that stays on my desk. It's Wu's only solid state, I think. And it's did such a good job that I just, it doesn't ever get disconnected. So Jack Wu was like, Wa7 Fireflies? I will, okay, okay. No, 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 version three. Okay, that has the built-in USB DAC and a pre-out for monitors. And I'm like, balance pre-out? Yes. Oh. Please send. So, as I sit here looking at it going, one gemstone in the title. So at least, at least it's an affordable. I'm gonna make it look much better than it currently does. Cause here's, here, this is like the raw, there's accessory screws and magnets and you get this plate and you have to apply these little silicone things. And, oh God, don't, don't smash the tubes now, buddy. And that clicks in place. And then you could take a selection of anime waifus, which I'm of course going to do. And I apologize to anyone who's a real audiophile. It's like, what the fuck is this guy doing? I'm just, I just, I have to, it's just, it's a requirement, right? I've assigned a, a legit thing with the devil. And he's like, you have to just cover it with anime stickers. But then you reach down here ah, and you pull out the thing that makes a woo amp a woo amp. And that is the giant chunk of actual glass. I never picked one up before because you never had a show and you're like, I'm just going to yank that off the damn amp. But you never do that. So what we do is we're going to gently apply. Oh, this is harrowing that. And it sits right on those little silicone corners. And oh, now it's something special because you've got protection for your tube. Literally all this glass block is, is a protection so you don't smash into the tubes. That is dense and you i think what um they should do at audio is they should have templates that perfectly fit where i put the anime stickers and they should sell you landscapes or you know lyrics to songs or whatever you want and then you could just apply that and then put the glass on top of it because it's a cool effect to have it not be seen and then be seen and then not be seen and i was actually considering doing that like measuring it and going into the photoshop and trying to make an exact template with the holes and you could just lay it all out It'd be kind of cool have a z reviews logo but what we're basically talking about here is the third gen of the WA7 Fireflies tube amp, now with built-in power supply. That was another thing. The original um, Fireflies had a separate power supply, either a big box or you could special order the tube amp power supply that was literally another one of these to the left of it or I guess right of it, depending on what side of the equator you're on. And you would power that and then that would jump over to power this and then you were golden. So this new version is much more compact. This is it, you buy, you get the cube. You plug a big ass, this is that $50 power cord that looks hysterically nice um, from Amazon. You plug this big bastard in here. You plug a USB cable, and this is the one that it came with, and I have that in my laptop here, which by the way, the laptop is sitting on the um, Grove made laptop holder stand, which I think we could all appreciate nice things. This is made in America, that's made in America, the laptop's made, wherever the fuck laptops are made. Um, I put a tub background because I couldn't find a tube background, so I found a tub one that's close enough. And also, I wanna point out that all the wires today match because these are the Z-Reviews Edition Periapt cables. Yeah, I know, Periapt's like, hey, we're gonna make a cable that uses the colors from your channel. And I'm like, what colors? And they're like, red, black, and yellow. And I'm like, that's perfect. You'll never confuse my, these look like safety cables for some sort of weird, you know, fire management system on a truck from Switzerland. But all the cables um, with, this is sort of my me mini pimping. This is all I complain about when I talk about pair up cables. I'm like, God damn, this fucking split's too big. Well, this split's actually smaller. It's the only set that makes smaller splits. So if you like the smaller split in your fucking pair up cable, these are the fucking ones I'm Sorry that my color scheme is this, but that's what you get. Um, took out three headphones specifically for the review. If you've been watching my channel for the last couple weeks, you'll notice this has been here for a while. 
during IEM reviews, during other headphone reviews, during amp reviews, and I've used it. It's great for IEMs. Honestly, the sensitivity on the, on super sensitive IEMs with, you know, balanced or unbalanced out, it's fucking clean. And it's a tube. So I try not to judge too many IEMs on tubes because how many people are actually IEMing, tubing IEM, tube IEM? I'm tubing? I, I tubing. Very few. But it was nice to give it a shot on there. Um, probably talk about the actual functionality of the unit. No power switch on front. So fine. At least you know it's on. There are uh, LEDs under the tubes because it has to. Sh that's their power indicator. There is an orange LED here that is not a power indicator. That, which hold on, let me unpause Mac Miller. That is to indicate that you are either going to headphones. Well, that's a switch. Or to speakers. Because that shuts off. Can I just... I think we just might be out. I don't want to be demonetized, but I want to listen to that fucking song. Okay, I can just swap it up. Ooh. There are three switches in the back of this, which is kind of like, if it's the only thing in your desk, you're golden because you just learn those three switches. Power, then there's a top switch that goes left and right. I'll show you the back of the unit in a minute. But um, from memory, it's power on this side. Then on, there's two switches that line up completely on top of each other. One that slides left and right that goes USB or RCA input. I happen to have both USB. RCA, USB, RCA. And then there's another switch below it that goes up and down, and that is for those, these. Up for the headphone amp, which was the indicator on, down for that. And the indicator is nice because if you don't have anything plugged into this and you have it on, you're like, I don't see a light. That means this volume is controlling those speakers. And those are the Fluid FX 80s, which sound great always but now you throw a little bit of like tube amp with a good DAC and it is a very good DAC that's too I actually was doing like a being got the uh, Gashelli J2 down there actually are you a J2 or a JNOG you an original JNOG either way either way I was switching between it there's about a five decibel difference between the USB input and the uh, JNOG at full tilt so it's gonna be a little bit hotter coming off of your USB, which is fine because it means you have to get to use more volume control. Oh, we got a plus on the end. Um, Harmonic Dime Poseidons. Uh, an amplifier friendly headphone amp, amp friendly, friendly headphone that frankly, I think sound best on a tube. And this was sort of the amplifier that told me that. Uh, I used it on a couple other ones and then I reviewed it and then I put it on this one and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is like the modern HD 600. So when you amp it properly, or not all, they can be amped properly on almost anything, properly. But when you amp it with something with some flavor and this amp has beautiful tube flavor, then you, you sit down and you actually are like, fa. You don't go, you don't say an F word. You say fa, because you can't finish it. We'll see, am I on this one, I think? Dragon training, yes. Nora Jones. Uh, 1.5 watts per channel out of the balance. They don't mention what the ohm rating is for that statement, but I've not really had much trouble with them. And if I push it anywhere near the top, it's too loud to even like listen to, so I don't hear distortion. Uh, I'm not going to give it like T60 or try to even squeeze the uh, 880, 600 ohms on that. Even though it does claim it'll handle 600 ohm headphones, I'm just gonna like back it off. Back it off a little bit. Like we are at, it's a very good uh, volume knob also. Almost no, like when you turn an analog volume knob, you usually hear one side, not the other, and it's like, 
and then comes into it. And this is just, I don't hear it. I like the knob too. It's very large and it's got a nice, just, can I pick this thing up? It's like eight pounds. The knob is knurled, sticks out just enough, is super smooth to spin around, and it's got that little just circle indicator. There's your two connections, there's your LED. It's got some uh, silicone legs on the bottom. There's your 110 or 230 switch under there. I guess I have to turn this. How am I gonna turn this thing around? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna depower it, which disconnects it from that. I'm gonna unplug this stupid, stupid, don't buy this. Don't buy this, it's inconvenient. It just looks really cool. So of course I bought it. I'm gonna turn this son of a bitch around. I'll unplug the headphones as well. I'm gonna go a gander at the back. You know what, this would be a hell of a lot easier if I took the uh, the glass off. I don't feel like taking the glass off though. It's like the whole means of it, the look. It's literally just a style choice. They could have just sold the black box with a tube sticking out of it and little guards around it. No, 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 fuck you. This shit's special and you will have a four and a half, five pound chunk of real glass on there. I just don't want it to slip and slide forward as I'm doing this, because I am doing a Zeos thing right now. Um, so here's the back of it. USB in the upper left. There's your power switch on the bottom left. Your AC inlet on the bottom. Your RCAs, which I am using the extra long world's best cables for this. Here's your RCA USB switch, left and right. Here's your pre-out section. With off on, you have a 3.5 millimeter unbalanced output and a 4.4 balanced output. And uh, Wu was nice enough to send me uh, one of their cables for it because he, he was like, you literally have a 4.4 to XLR that'll go like to speakers. And I'm like, no. So they made me one. Let me show you the other end of it. Don't roll away too far. Because honestly, I'm super impressed with just literally the connectors they use. Yeah, I know, get it. Look how small those are. Compared to like, here. Look at that, little stubby bastards, which will be actually amazing if you're trying to plug these in to powered monitors that are anywhere near a wall. Don't do the bad thing where I walk into it. Because you can actually uh, settle this. It's only as far back as an RCA, really. So that adds a great deal of space. I think this is a little large, the split, but I mean, they kind of have to. They're going to go from a one into two, but it's all labeled Woo Audio. It actually is labeled 44M to DXXM. Can I put this down and still walk around? I'm going to try to reassemble all this without messing up too bad, but this is a zero review, so God knows anything can happen. Let's take this jacket off. Reviews make me sweaty. Lots of things make me sweaty, but specifically reviews. So yeah, that's the whole tour of the unit. Three switches all in the back. If they were in the front, I think it would kind of ruin the mystique of it, but it's also less convenient and I have to bring that up. So let's plug in, that goes here. Those speakers are going to be real upset when I plug this in. First of all, I can't see anymore, so now I'm just doing this blind. I'm fine. I'm a professional. Let me do professional things. Hold on. That goes there. This stupid, and I'm upset that I picked it for this review. Just, just, oh, God. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh, God. Save yourself the trouble in $50. Just use a regular power cord. Oh, there you go. Flip switch, light, light. Tubes warm up for a second. We are on that. We have this to reset, or we could switch over to that, which is still playing. There you go. Chunky boy. I haven't done it yet, but I still have the benchmark AHB2 like the most linear speaker amp in the world that like, I love it, I love it. But what I haven't done with it is preamp it with this. Because when you have something that's super linear like that amplifier, that's super powerful, if you wanted to like flavor it a bit, it's very hard to do that. You can get whatever headphone you like and put it on there. But if you wanna you know, do something beforehand, 
this would be fucking perfect. Because I could just run those XLR cables right to the back of it. And then I would have a tube pre, and this is a full class A tube, by the way. I was reading over the specs, which I only do really right before the review. Because there's no point. By the way, it's not out in silver yet. I'm hoping it comes out in silver soon. It'll look so sexy in silver. Uh, ba -ba 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 uses the new ESS Saber audio file 24-bit. They don't tell me the model number of the Saber DAC they're using. I don't think. Uh, uh, what was I looking at? Eight and a half pounds. That's correct. Uh, designed and assembled in New York, USA. That's where I'm from. I used to live there. Um, the Exmos X-Core Audio Asynchronous USB compatible with Mac, uh, PC, Android, and iOS. So you can actually run your phone into this if you had the right cable for it. I don't know how many people would, but you could. If you're one of those people who literally wants to go to bed and your little nightstand has a fucking wa seven fireflies on it, you can just plug your phone into it and be like, I'm just going to listen to my... You know, $2,000 headphones. Actually, these are $300 headphones. I'm just going to listen to my $300 headphones on my $1,400 tube amp DAC, which the fact that it includes a decent DAC and has pre-outs, all this is becoming more and more like acceptable price range. Because it was always a little bit pricey for the Fireflies. Because it's like, all right. And was it even balanced at the beginning? I'm trying to remember like the original version one. I don't even think the original version one was a balanced amp. Correct me if I'm wrong. But then the version 2 is balanced, and it's actually... I'm going to link the version 3, this one. But if you go to, like, amplifiers, the version 2, the second gen, is 800 bucks. And yeah, that... Actually, no, that, that's a 3.5 millimeter and a quarter inch. Even that wasn't balanced. Wow. So this is the first... This is a huge leap. This is huge. Yeah, because that one, and you can get it with a solid state or the tube thing, and this is just everything all in one done. Everything all in one done, and it's balanced, and it's got the power supply built in, and it's got pre-outs in both uh, both single-ended and balanced, and it sounds like I look at my tube rack. Like This rack is just for tubes. I've got the Tor Balance down there. I've got the Solaris uh, from Audio Valve here. That's five grand. I got the TA30, which is a hybrid. I've got the uh, TA26, which is not a hybrid, which is an amazing sounding entry level uh, tube amp. I got the TA20, which is also a hybrid, which I kind of look at it and go, why are you here? Why are you here? Like I, you, you should replace, this thing would replace. I don't know if it would replace the Tor because I feel like I would want to swap tubes in this to really like, to, the amount of fuckery the Tor produces would probably only come from made in those weird Russian tubes. Those weird Russian tubes, like that sort of equivalent in these. Because the tubes he's put in it, they're not exactly like sterile. Like when you get a, a, a Chinese tube amplifier, it comes with the cheapest Chinese tubes and it makes tubes sound like the original Dark Voice. The original tubes in the Dark Voice sound okay. Like I'm getting a tube sound, that's great. And then you start swapping them from just random shit on eBay and all of a sudden you're, you're, it wakes up. And when you find the right combination of power and preamp, it's like, this is why I go any further than this. The only one that actually beat that from stock was the TA26. And then that Tor Audio, I would never, ever change the tubes in it. And this is right at that line where I, you're paying enough money for it that you probably could just live with the tubes and be happily ever after. I just want to be happy ever after. Here you go. You're fine. But the curiosity is going to get you. And then you're going to be like, well, I need to go to eBay and I got to look at that. What model tube is it? Okay, go look up the 12, uh, 12 AU7 on eBay. All matched pair. Vintage 1964 order. And then you start getting into the real audiophile stuff where it's like, well, which tubes do I want to use today or tomorrow? And you have the joy of taking off that glass block to replace them. And by the way, these sockets are um, PTE. PTFE. Wait, hold on. The, the plastic, the cutting board is made out of, which makes me happy. Uh, yeah, poly tetra fluoroethylene, PTFE. So that you won't crack them because a lot of these ones are ceramic. And when you put in there with the pins, if you don't put it in right or if, you crack, if it gets too hot, like, mm, bad news. So 
Where, where's my headphones that I'm currently wearing? Actually, you know, let's take these headphones off. I've already, I've already talked about the harmonic dime Poseidons. Can we talk about the Stellias? Because these are oh, top of the line. Are they the top of the line still? And I've got these on the quarter inch cable. But these are the easiest to drive headphones. Probably should swap this over to that. So now I got a perfect circle playing. Play. There's perfect circle. And I've listened to this long enough to know that I'm enjoying everything it's doing to it. It's not one of those like, is it, is it better? Do I kind of feel like it? Mm, yeah, no, I'd fucking, yes. Does the sound moves in ways that, because right now at this point in my career, I just put in a tube amp and I go, well, is it a tube amp? And I know that should be obvious from the fact that it has tubes, but is it, is it enough of a tube amp that you can close your eyes, have someone plug it in, and then you can assess, yes, I hear tube things, things that only happen in a tube, and this is a tube amp. Because there are some out there that are just so linear and clean. In fact, one of my biggest complaints from a Woo product was when I did the big boy, where is the big boy? The Watt 22, where are you? You giant bastard. The Watt 22, which now has a second generation for $2,500, I did the version one, I believe, and someone sent it to me. And back in the day, I couldn't tell that amplifier from a solid state, like a good solid state versus that, because there was so much effort put into making that tube sound linear. That what was the point? So that's why I like the Wa 11 Topaz. That's why I like the Wa 7 Fireflies. You plug something into it, and it doesn't sound like a linear, straightforward, everyday. It's got the flavor. It needs the flavor. If it doesn't have the flavor, why are you fucking buying it? You, you're buying it because... You're buying it for, well, three reasons. You want something made in America. You want something that looks like this. With the glass block on top of it. Because that just screams like, hey, you didn't get me on AliExpress. And then you want something that actually makes a difference when you plug it from here into something else. And you go, okay, that's what that sounds like. And that's what this sounds like. And uh, I've ripped out, it only has, I have a 4.4 uh, wire as well with a weird like thumb hold. I had to get the adapter out because this does not have a four pin. I'm not crying about it, don't worry. But let's plug in my set of GL2000s. A controversial headphone because my pair apparently is made by God. And uh, I've had several other people tell me theirs sound exactly like mine. And I have several people tell me like, mm, it wasn't. But big old planars. Actually, I've got the remote hooked up. I spent a lot of time. Not ACDC. Predator OST. Jungle Truck. The one with Schwarzenegger. Not the Danny Glover. Well, that Predator 2 is still a good movie. What's your opinion on the Predator franchise? Let's get the comments buzzing with some modern takes. Because I think Predator 1 and 2 are great, and everything that's come after that is a garbage. All right, let's see what's playing over here. Maestro Classics. In a Monastery Garden. That's a big difference between the Predator Jungle Trek song and uh, Albert William Keetleby. Yeah, no, I'm in a monastery garden. I'm having a real hard time finding reasons not... The fact that it's on my desk and I can reach, give it the reach around is probably hiding some of the, the problem that you would have at home, where if you put this on a desk next to something, like right here, maybe you can't reach around and, and easily access the, uh, the three switches. Because they're on both sides. It's not like you just have to keep one side. Power is here, and you're going to want to shut this off at night. And then if you're me, you're going to want to switch back and forth. If you're going to use it to its full advantage, you're going to want to use either powered monitors or output this to another amplifier and run speakers off of it. Or you can get one of those wires that I just showed you shorter and run it to another solid-state amplifier, which I would then probably... How would I want to run that? Because I would need to get an amplifier that had... 
two inputs. I have to have another DAC somewhere that's feeding it just clean solid state DAC to a clean solid state amp. And then when it's time to just, you know, I want more power than this thing can produce, but I want that tubeness. Then you would go back here and you would give this a switch. And you would go from the headphone amp and this to the output feeding into a solid state to make a hybrid solid state and mm, be so good. That's why I really can't wait to try to do the AHB too. All right, let's go back to this. Jesus. That's a legit Jesus. What is playing? Badi Assad, B A D I A S S A D. Estudo para Violeo from Echoes of Brazil. That is some just. This is some stuff that would play at like an audiophile show, and you'd walk in and be like, wow. I don't care about the speakers. What song is this? That sounds great. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, if he's like, leave this, just leave it, you know, keep it, keep it, Zios, hold on to it for a bit. It'll be the tube amp that comes, I don't think I'll try to shove it on my rack unless I put it there. But the problem with putting it there, here's, okay, here's my problem. If I put it there, I can't reach the power button. I can't, I'd have to get up and walk around to reach the power button. I'm not saying that I couldn't. Also, has anyone ever preamped into another tube amp from a tube amp? Could I do that multiple times? How would I do that? That doesn't have a preamp, but that has a legit preamp. This has a legit preamp, and this has a legit preamp. I'm seeing a video idea in the future. How many pre? How many tube preamps into tube preamps is too many tube preamps? Like, what would it sound like after like? I don't know if I have any more over there, but like four tube amps into each other, would it just be like a fucking mess at the end of it? I'll have to write that down. All right, let's go to the gorillas, because in the jungle, it's as big a leap from the, because I, I never got to review the original Fireflies, and I've always wanted to. And I, I, was, I was talking to Jack when I would see him at, at shows and everything. Yeah, I want it. And could you send it to me with the solid state uh, power supply and the tube power supply? So I could compare the two and contrast. And then and then it was like, well, then I got to get the thing. And it doesn't it doesn't really work like that. And it doesn't have, all I could do is a headphone. Now that I've got actual features, the price, actually, I think the price of the original has dropped quite a bit. I think that was originally like $1,300, $1,400. So this is sort of just taking over the slot. And it does everything that did better power supply integrated in dac integrated in you don't have to worry about that plug it into your phone i think that's going to be a huge thing for people who are buying this they just want it standalone put this on your desk nothing else run it to control your speakers any powered monitors you want you can't select the only thing you can't do is you can't change it from a pre out to a line out so if you want to use your own volume knob on an amp you basically have to fix that hold it in place, and then control with this, always. Because the, you're not accessing the DAC alone, you're accessing the DAC through the tubes. So you're sort of you're sort of not stuck with, but you're going to have to take advantage of this volume knob, which luckily it is a very nice, smooth, lovely volume knob. Let's go back to speakers again, even though it's probably gonna get me demonetized, and let's go back to da Badi Assad. It just sounds, the phenomenon is there. I've listened to these speakers quite a bit, and they're not like in a perfect spot, but it's not bad. I still got all the ceiling insulation, and we've got plenty of diffusion behind it via thousands of dollars in headphones and speakers. It's great. It's great. Zeus gives it his fucking thumb, thumb of approval. Look at this one right here. Look at the, her thumb. Figures the battery died. Just as I'm going to end it, the battery is like, no, 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 no. 49% wasn't enough, Zeus. Yeah, I thought I could squeeze one in because usually if the reviews are short enough, I can get it under 50%. I'm done. This is great. I will link to it. I will link to that wallpaper. I will link to those speakers. I'll, I don't know if I have the link to the cable that he sent me. Because he was like, hey, you need a cable? Maybe it's under accessories. How much? How much for the cable? Oh God! Yeah, it's a two hundred fifty dollar cable. 
No, wait, that doesn't even have the out the terminations. Select termination, balanced XLR, four pin XLR female to XLR. Is that what I want? Yeah. Oh, he's got a whole bunch of them here. And I definitely have a two meter length. So yeah, it's like a $250, $299 cable. It's, a, it's not cheap. You were talking about a cable is made by a company that sells expensive tube amps. You're gonna you're gonna pay for that cable, but I will link to everything else and the Grove made stand, and obviously the periapt cables, which you're all in love with now. Because look at the color scheme; it's gorgeous. Who doesn't want like a wasp covered in blood? That's what I see when I see this. I see like oh bees bad, but then I see blood, and it's like oh it's great. So yes, thank you to Jack Wu for sending this out. Thank you to Periapt for sending these out. Um, thank you to Grove May for sending out the stand, which does a fantastic job. And I was, I love that I could hide things underneath it. Or I could pull out an entire DAC from underneath there. And thanks to the artists who provide all these wallpapers to the internet. And then I collect them. And if you want to find those artists, by the way, Sauce Now or IQDB, a lot of them have Pixiv or Twitters and you can go and follow them and support them. I support so many artists. Like I need to, need to start another Patreon so I could just use it to support the artists that I patronize. It's a very weird system of moving money around. Um, but yeah, thank you. And uh, I'll even link the waifu sticker packs, yes. In case you want to put your own stickers in there or probably better off making a template. If someone hasn't made a template, if you're on my subreddit, by the way, I haven't mentioned that, that I have a, a Reddit, a subreddit. I don't go there very often because if I went there, I would be obsessively required to answer people's questions constantly. And I, I'm, I'm it sucks that I can't do I just don't have fuck time. But if you do make a template that is the you know that you could load up in Photoshop with all this laid out, if you need measurements for me, just give me give me a holler it's on Telegram and I will just measure this for you. You could print out your own templates and different you could have like every day of the week you could pull it off and peel it off like one of those calendars. What were those Dilbert calendars? Like, like you peeled it off every day? Like peel off one day, but that much paper under there. Um, although I wouldn't recommend stacking too much paper next to hot tubes. It's just a thing. I'm done. Are you done? Patreon, subscribe, star, see your views early. Participate in yard sales. Uh, access to lossless sound demos and the sound demo oasis for the lost sound demos. Uh, the $10 chat where you can access me, access to me uh, 24 hours a day. Well, I'll answer when I'm awake, but sometimes at 3 a.m. you might just get a, like, a voice message that sounds like, yeah, no, if you want to put speakers in the corner, you're definitely going to want to put some sort of some sort of sound dampening behind it, so you don't get echo. You'll get that message from my voice, which is fantastic if you want to pay $10 for that. Um, you also, from that chat, get into a private swap meet channel, which you're in for life. So once you join the $10 chat, you're in there and you could trade gear and be like, I have this and I want this, or I want this shit to sell, and people post an entire list. And as long once you sell something, you just edit your post and delete it. So it's great. There's, there's a couple hundred posts in there still that you know things have been posted months ago that are still for sale. And if it's your stuff, don't forget to delete it so people aren't PMing you about it. Um, but yeah, and then Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides Forum, which are we are looking for sponsors for that place to try to make things happen besides just run the forum. I would love to like host a show. If COVID's winding down or maybe South African COVID's winding up, I don't know, we'll have some fun. Um, we'll, we'll rent a space and then I'll just gas everything. Just no, no one can come in. Uh, yeah, no, I'm done, you're done, that's done, that's in the description, everything's done, and I'm going home. Wait. Oh, fuck, I'm already home.